talk to you about boat latches okay not just one type of boat latch different types of boat latches we're going to find out which one is probably the best fit for you in your boat okay um i'm going to show you how to install certain ones i've already had and i've i have videos installing other ones and then if you i mean i'll i'll cross reference those also fire and fishing has a video pretty extensively on slam latches i believe i think he does i'll be putting that one in here too i think jds outdoors also has one and if you're part of our TV Nation community on, on Facebook, there is quite a few people incorporating uh, slam latches into their builds. They're pretty nice. They're really nice, okay? But they're not the only latch. So there might be other latches that are easier to use and even better for you. And there's also, okay, so we're gonna start with uh, this one. The most basic latch, it's Perco Pool Latch, okay? And uh, there are also people incorporating these um, in the TV Nation community also. There's somebody out there with a really, really really nice 1436 John boat that I think he just completed and he kitted his entire boat with these. Um, I think these are actually great. They're only four bucks a piece, five bucks a piece at most, and they do the basic. Okay, they're not an actual latch. There's no latch in the bottom. All you need is a hole saw to install it. There's no margin for error. Okay, there just isn't. So super easy to install. You can install these in a few minutes. Okay, however long it takes your hole saw to drill through uh, your hatch. And then you just pull, up it goes. So if you have hatches that are sitting uh, parallel or facing backwards, opening up backwards, so I mean when you're going down the road the wind's not going to catch your hatch and lift it up, then these are going to work fine. And these are also the most flush fitting deal. So depending on how thick or thin your carpet is, these are going to fit super flush. Super flush with your carpet. Okay, um, They're probably the most low prof profile way to latch your um, hatches but um, there is a very, very low margin for error. So if you don't get the uh, measurement perfect, you'll mess the whole thing up. So you really gotta really pre-plan and know what you're doing with these. And I have a video how to measure to get the proper grip on these. And please watch that video before you just try. We're gonna ruin wood. Um, they're also, they're pretty good. They're like a step up from the pull latch, but they're not, I don't know. Like these are the, these are the kind of the composite all these are composite, like the high uh, high density composite plastic. And they're okay. This one's actually a locking one. I don't know if you can see that locking mechanism. It's crap. It comes with like a little, like a, like a key from the dark ages, like a little cross T key that anybody can duplicate. And uh, if it's plastic, really somebody can jab a screwdriver in there and just jam this thing up. They do make metal ones. I don't know how much better those are. I just don't want to get them. But these run between 10 and $15 a piece. Some of the really expensive slime latches run almost $20 a piece, and I think that's a huge waste of money. I would definitely just get the regular uh, non-locking slime latches. I mean, if you wanna get the locking slime latches, you can. I also have fears about them jamming up over time and then you having to break through them anyways. So I would just get the non-locking slime latches, okay? Um, they're a little bit more secure. I mean, they're, I guess they're a little cooler because they latch, but, uh, the other one I want to talk about um, that's not really been used too often and uh, for for a various number of reasons are these actual legit boat latches. The boat hatch latches. I don't know what you want to put. You can put boat latch, slam latch, hatch latch in the search engine for eBay, Amazon, Google, and you're going to pull up uh, a multitude. These are just a few. These are just the ones that I use. There's tons of them. They're stainless steel. There are different types of variations. Um, but this is kind of like the T-handle that you see on like the higher-end bass boats. This is a, just a, a straight composite one. And it's just a T-handle that twists the cam. This is the cam. So, latched. And then it fits flush and then when you want to open up it just open it up. And then close it again. I kitted my entire boat with these. These are pretty nice. These are also really expensive. They can be as little as 20 bucks. They can be as much as 40 and upwards. 
depending on which brand you pick. And then they make full metal ones, chrome ones, you know, uh, plastic and metal hybrid ones, locking. Anyways, check this out. Okay, guys, so I ordered these. These were, they, they're locking. And they were about 89 something for the whole set for a set of four, which is a screaming deal for these, which are generally 30 and 40 a piece. People are generally paying like only that much for like two of them. So, got a pretty screaming deal. But the only thing is they came camless. So, I had this leftover cam, this this lever here, which actually latches on, you know, to the, the knife edge here. And um, I had a leftover one from this one that I bought. And then there's a different type of like a, like a, a bent bracket that kind of bends up in here. I'll show you that one a little bit later. Um, but right now, this works. But now I'm out of cam. So the reason these were so cheap is because they were camless. Okay? And I bought them camless, meaning without the little lever here. Because there's no guarantee that the cams that I would have bought would have fit the way I built my boat. And you need to think about that if you're a DIY boat builder. Sometimes these things just aren't going to conform. Just like a... These are really made for the status quo for, for, you know, for the big brand name boats. So you got to do some conforming. So what I have done is I've made my own cam here, okay, out of just uh, about a three sixteenths by whatever that however long half inch or three quarter inch aluminum. And I'm gonna put it, see this is a square taper here. I don't know if the camera will focus. Yeah, you see that's a square taper. So there's a good chance that this might not work the way they were still when they had they had like tooth tooth lock nuts that dug into here so it didn't slide. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna need those. And I'm not sure if this is just gonna free free slide around. I have tensioning uh, lock nuts in a 3 8 uh, stainless steel hardware somewhere around here in this junk of right here. 3 8 stainless steel hardware, these are 3 8 bolts, 3 8 uh, locks. So I'm gonna try this and I'm gonna tighten them down as much as I can in the wedge and um, see if it'll work. Okay, and that is that after some drilling, and so there it is. Ultimately, that's really all it is, it's just a chunk of metal. The piece there is probably like a dipped steel. It didn't, I mean, it was heavy as tar, this stupid little piece, so. Um, this aluminum here, I think it's going to be better bet anyways. So we're going to go ahead and install this in the second hatch and see how it runs. Literally, the underhang, since I, I decked this boat the way I did, the underhang is right here. Is literally cake. So I mean, all I have to do is measure from the seam, and then make my drill. So wooden hole saw, not by metal hole saw. Or they make the Lennox makes pretty good hole saws, to where they they cut through both metal and wood pretty well. But a lot of times a by metal hole saw sucks at cutting through wood for whatever reason. I it is beyond me. Um, so guesstimation is key here. Yep, that'll do it, so. through the whole thing you want to just make sure it's deep enough so this is going to create a mess you're going to have to vacuum or if you were thought ahead like i should have you could have just had a vacuum up here for purposes of this video i'm not going to do that so this is that's all going to spill everywhere and so i left enough gap for my bait system to not have to worry about that so i have a hole here because i i you can tell when the drill bit goes through you can tell you can't really tell so I really only have to do this. Okay. And there is that. And that also keeps it from getting jammed up in there. You can just throw that away and move right on to the next one. All right. Now I have a hole, a uh, decent hole. Now I gotta see there's all the sod. Here's this. And so the carpet's going to add an extra like one eighth to one fourth inch rise on this, and we want this as flush as possible. It's not going to sit as flush as a slam latch. A slam latch literally sits super flush. It's got like no lip. It'll snug right in the carpet. These have a little bit of a lip, so we're going to have to size these here. 
put these through the hole. And we're gonna have to just a, a hobby knife and cut. This is if you have really, really low profile carpet. I have super thin carpet. It's like stupid thin. It's not, it's uh, I have it that way because it's really, really hard to stain and it's really, really hard to mildew. It doesn't, doesn't mildew. It dries almost immediately when it gets wet. So I've had this carpet for seasons and spilled stuff, had fish blood on it, had soda on it, and it, unless you just let it stay that way, it's really hard to stain, so. But the, the, the drawback is this won't sit flush in it. Now, if you have like the higher like uh, relief carpet, like the more plush carpet, you probably don't have to do this step. Um, but it just depends on your carpet thickness. This is just thin outdoor, or not outdoor, but it's, you know, thin marine carpet. But that's gone. So, in with the hatch. And so the underswing is fine. So, should be able to try and pull this. Yeah, so that's good. So we've got just enough clearance for my bait system, and then it also comes with a rubber gasket. These should come with a rubber gasket. I don't need this. These are already thick enough with the insulation and then the uh, the matting. It, I don't need that. It would just be pointless to put that on. And then, really, if you're, that's probably really good to have if you're if you're not running carpet at all. If you're running more of a roughneck look with a rhino liner or some kind of non-skid for uh, the deck topper. This thing's such a pain in the face to do. It's fine. Watching it without damn game music. So, at least we know it sits there. We'll flip it. Locked. All right, second one installed. So, I'm just gonna take this little the Velcro preset off and uh, do the rest. All right guys, so let me know what you think. I kind of want to do this video differently because I've covered slam latches before in depth and so have a few other people. Um, I think ever since I've kind of pioneered these in to the scene, uh, a lot of people have been using them with a lot of good success and they think they're great. They're just not the only thing. And some other people have used these for pretty great success. And again, not a whole lot of coverage, but I think they deserve coverage because these are pretty great. And I'm gonna use these on specific lat uh, hatches that um, that I'm gonna need that I can't actually install slime latches or these on. And lastly, there's just not a lot of coverage on these. And so I wanted to give these specifics and uh, see if they're really gonna be good for what you need them for. Give a shout out to Fire and Fishing and JDS Outdoors for helping me run uh, Tiny Boat Nation group on Facebook. Uh, I wanna give a shout out to all of TV Nation for all the wealth of knowledge and all the cool ideas and everything. I will be posting a TV Nation shout out vid. I just haven't got around to it. Every time I get around to editing it, somebody posts like a pretty near completion or completed build, and I kind of just been incorporating them in. So it's, it's I'm, I don't know. It's coming though. It's coming very, very shortly. And uh, just check that out, guys. Also, we're going to start really refining it, our ways and our rules of how we're gonna have these uh, online, tiny boat specific fishing tournaments. Those are gonna happen. What kind of classes? I don't know, let us know, let us know what you think. I'm probably gonna post a video specific on those. Um, but there will be different types of classes, you know, 14 foot, 16 foot, uh, V hole, flat bottom, and they'll also be the the all in uh, fishing tournaments. But they'll they will be tiny boat specific, and there will be specific rules on how the fish are accounted for and weighed and documented. And uh, they're also going to have to be done on a forum. They cannot be done in the Facebook group. I feel the Facebook groups have killed forums just simply because of how easy it is to post pictures and just post in general. But there's just no way we can log a tournament on a Facebook page. They're not set up for it. So if you want in on those, you're going to have to sign up on tinyboatnation.net. And check that out, guys. Um, I also need help running it. I need mods. I really do. So think about that. If you hit, uh, if you have any questions or if you think you that would be something you'd like to do, comment and post in the comment section. Check us out in our, on our community on Facebook, Tiny Boat Nation. Just search engine and uh, hit us up, guys. Peace. Thank you.